Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 19 and one where we're going to have a look at some of the reactions involving alcohols. So what we, are, what we need to be able to do in this particular one is we need to be able to write some equations, look at the conditions, if there are any uh, specific conditions associated with some of these reactions, predict products and represent reactions of alcohols. And the ones we need to look at are combustion, dehydration, substitution, and oxidation. So we'll have a look at uh, examples of all four of these different types of reactions. So the first one we want to have a look at is one we have already looked at before, which is combustion of alcohols. So when we were looking at the uh, at calculating experimentally the enthalpy or the molar enthalpy of combustion of alcohols, we use this particular equation, which is the combustion of ethanol. So in this case, when ethanol combusts in oxygen, we produce carbon dioxide and water, and this is going to assume complete combustion. Of course, if there is um, low oxygen, then we may find that carbon monoxide uh, or even carbon as uh, soot can be produced instead of carbon dioxide. Water, of course, is always going to be one of our products. Uh, the products of these combustion reactions, assuming complete combustion, will be the same, and you just change the alcohol and get some practice writing some of these different equations down. The second important reaction is the dehydration of alcohols. This is probably best seen by using the structural formula, and again, I will um, keep this at ethanol, so it's one of the easiest ones for us to deal with, um, but I'm sure you'll look at a few more examples when you get to class. You may remember that we can hydrate ethene or hydrate an alkene by adding water across the double bond. When we add water across the double bond, we break the double bond and a hydrogen goes onto one carbon and the hydroxyl group, the OH group, goes onto the other carbon. Sulfuric acid was the catalyst for that particular reaction, but the difference is that when we go in the opposite direction here, we use dilute sulfuric acid. If we have concentrated sulfuric acid, the concentrated sulfuric acid actually acts as a dehydrating agent. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to effectively pull the water out of this molecule. So when it does that, what we are left with is our original hydrogens and the water molecule that's gone leaves us with a double bond in its place. So as a result, Concentrated sulfuric acid can be used to dehydrate ethanol to ethene. As a general rule, a concentrated acid like sulfuric acid can be used to dehydrate an alkanol to an alkene. What type and how we would classify it will be dependent on where the OH group is located. So already I hope, hope you're starting to realise that the tertiary alcohols are going to behave chemically in some slightly different ways to the way that the primary and secondary alcohols behave. And that's partly because in a reaction like this where we need a double bond to form between two carbons, we can't get that if that one of those carbons is attached to... Um, not just that carbon, but two other carbons as well. We can't create that double bond in the removal of that um, hydroxyl group. So uh, keep in mind as we go through these different reactions that some of them are actually not going to react with the tertiary alcohols. Our third reaction is a substitution reaction. Again, if we look at the structural formula for the alcohol, and again, I've chosen ethanol just because it's, it's quicker and easier to draw. 
You don't have to sit and watch me write hydrogens all day. Uh, so in this case, what's going to happen is our hydrogen halide um, is going to have a hydrogen and a chlorine atom. And what's going to happen is we're going to get a substitution happening here between these two groups. So what happens when um, that substitution takes place is that in our original molecule, we still have two carbons. We still have our original five hydrogens around these two carbons. But now we have that halogen that's substituted for the OH group. Of course, what that means is that the H, which was left behind, will combine with the hydroxyl group that's been replaced and that will form water. When we're looking at the substitution of alcohols, we are looking at the fact that that halide, that group 7 or 17 um, halogen atom, is going to replace the hydroxyl group and create a, uh, in this case, it would be a chloroethane from our original ethanol molecule. So this is one way we can turn alcohols into halogenated alkanes. And there's one more reaction. Our final reaction is a pretty important reaction and one that we will need to work through in class together because there's some quite complex steps associated with this. Oxidation is a really important reaction for alcohols because it actually allows us to identify the difference between a primary, secondary and tertiary alcohol when we don't actually know what we've got. The addition of a coloured solution such as potassium permanganate, which uh, is a purple solution, will tell us whether or not a reaction is occurring with a particular substance by changing the colour of the solution. Usually it will fade uh, through to colourless if all of the ions are removed from the solution. In the same way that we use the bromine test to tell the difference between an alkene or an unsaturated hydrocarbon and an alkane, a saturated hydrocarbon. This is a more complex one and because it's an oxidation, this whole reaction here is a net redox reaction. In order to know exactly what's happening, you would have to separate this into the reduction and the oxidation half equations. The other thing that I've done to simplify this a little bit is that uh, most of these are carried out in what we call acidified uh, conditions, acidified solutions, which may be warm or cool. And as a consequence of that, the nature of an acidified solution is to have an availability of H plus ions. And in fact, I've put the H plus ions up there over the top of the arrow, which would indicate that they're a catalyst or a condition that's important for this reaction to occur. In actual fact, I could add the 6H plus to this side of the equation or the 12H plus to this side of the second equation because they are actual reactants. They are part of what are necessary for these reactions to take place. You can see in the first case, a reaction of an oxidation of uh, an alcohol like ethanol produces a substance which we now would know as eth and now. So this would be C2H4 and a double bonded oxygen. So this would be an aldehyde, ethaldehyde or ethanol. If the conditions are slightly changed so that we actually have a hot uh, acidified potassium permanganate solution, uh, or a very high concentration of the permanganate ions, we can actually continue to drive this reaction further forward. So that now instead of the product becoming ethanol, it becomes ethanoic acid. And in fact, the um, compound now looks like this. We've defined oxidation in the past as loss of electrons or reduction as gain of electrons. But oxidation, probably in what makes most logical sense for its definition, is the addition of oxygen. And that's what we're really doing here. We're trying to add oxygen or, or increase the oxygen content of these particular molecules. 
We can do that by shifting the single bond to a double bond. We can do that by adding an extra hydroxyl group, which we do with ethanoic acid. And you can see that um, these types of reactions, these redox couples are actually uh, having one species which is being oxidized or having oxygen added to it and one species which is being reduced. And I, I hope you can see um, just in a, even in a very general way that the uh, manganese in this case, the manganese ion, is the one that's going to be uh, reduced. It's going to go from uh, uh, an oxidation state of 7 plus uh, back to 2 plus. So this is one of the reactions that can occur when primary alcohols, or two of the reactions that can occur when primary alcohols are oxidized. There is a third, um, methanol itself, which I can just quickly pop down here in the corner. If the conditions are sufficient, if there's a sufficient um, concentration of the permanganate solution and it's uh, of sufficient um, heat, then we can actually um, take this even further from the methanoic acid to carbon dioxide and water. And that's really oxidizing it as far as we can possibly go. So there's a couple of different options available to us when we have primary alcohols. And hopefully um, we can tell the difference uh, at the end point by what our final products are going to be. And I'm sure you have ways of uh, already suggesting to me how we might test for the presence of an acid. The two other groups of alcohols do something slightly different. For the secondary alcohol, so in this case we have to pick one where the OH group is on a central carbon, so I can't use ethanol this time um, because there is no secondary version of ethanol, it's only a primary alcohol. So I have to use propanol because propanol exists in two forms, propan-1-ol, which is primary, and propan-2-ol, which is secondary. So this time, when I have my hot acidified permanganate solution, this time I'm going to produce the ketone. So when I oxidize my propan 2-ol, I form this compound here, which is a ketone and which we would name as propanone. I don't need a number for this one. Um, because there's only one place where that double bond could be to be in a central carbon. So propanone. So this is again a different product that's uh, a result of this particular oxidation reaction. So secondary alcohols oxidize to produce different products to primary alcohols, even though primary alcohols can oxidize to a number of different products depending on the conditions and depending on the alcohol, we still get something different when we look at secondary alcohols. Hopefully, if you're realizing this, this shift from a hydroxy group to an oxy group is not going to be possible for our tertiary alcohols. And in fact, when we add our acidified potassium permanganate solution to our tertiary alcohol, we find no reaction. So just as uh, if we control the conditions for the addition of an alkane with bromine water, we see that there's no, no color change occurring, and that's telling us there's no reaction occurring. The same thing happens here with our oxidation of alcohols. One final thing, um, the permanganate ion is the one that I've chosen. The dichromate ion could quite easily have been chosen as well. It's an orange solution, and it too will discolor uh, or change color as the uh, reaction proceeds if oxidation is occurring. Uh, so these are the equations that describe how alcohols behave, primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols behave in the uh, reaction of oxidation. These ones will require a little bit of practice, so get to it, and thanks for watching.